A laboratory? Alchemy? I know nothing of it. But I understand that to a witcher this must be a very intriguing fight. Whoever it was sure knew their stuff, though. Got dragon glass vials and flasks, stills, sublimators, vengerometers. I want you to share your knowledge. Teach me alchemy. To understand alchemy, you must understand two great truths. First truth, as above, so below. Second truth, everything is one. Master Jeremiah, the basics of alchemy. Relax. Got some experience brewing potions. Alchemy is the fundamental practice of those that wish to experiment with the substances of nature and magic. There are nine base alchemical materials. Vitriol, Rebus, Aether, Albedo, Quiberth, Hydreigon, Vermilion, Brubido, and Negredo. They form the basis for any alchemical creation or experimentation, and are the main components in a witch's alchemical weaponry. Be it potions, bombs, or blade oils. I've no silver, but I can make a blade oil. Ingredients and materials may be sourced through many means. Alchemy ingredients, potions, and much more. There are herbs, fungi, and roots to pick. Suant mushrooms, long rude puffball, or mandrake, wolfsbane, begatic. A myriad of plant life that with proper knowledge and formulae can be boiled, strained, and mixed into any alchemical solution. However, a lot of these ingredients, essences, pastes, and solutions are video game clutter. In the Witcher books, alchemy and potion making is not elaborated upon, or quite as important as it is within the games. It is more of a game mechanic than anything with significant lore. But let's try to find some lore, shall we? The Witcher's life begins with an alchemical process. The trial of grasses inflicts a young boy's body, deconstructing it with toxins and mutagens. The result is a monster-slaying force to be reckoned with. Faster reflexes, the eyes of a cat, a pulse four times slower than a normal man's, along with other abilities. The decoction of the grasses, the formula for a witcher making cocktail, is comprised of a splattering of forktail spinal fluid, one manticore poison gland, a difficult ingredient to obtain given the ferocity of a manticore, one albina bruxa tongue, which is also not easily parted with. Quite vampire-like, in fact. Are you absolutely certain they don't administer a few of our genes during the trial of the grasses? Then mixed with mandrake root, rib leaf and byronia, and brewed into three solutions. The first, aptly named Mother's Tears, for a witcher is one abandoned or given up by their mother. The second and third are wild tray juice and spear grass sap. When injected into the body, the process commences and hours of torture awaits the young would-be witcher. That is, if he does not succumb to the poison, as many do. Only three in ten survive, the rest meet an agonising death. If a witcher survives the trial, his new metabolism and physical fortitude allow him to imbibe potions of a similar toxic makeup. These potions are useful tools when facing monsters of all varieties. Alongside the base alchemical substances, of which we've discussed, potions are brewed using alcohol. White Gull, a witcher's hallucinogenic concoction, made from Redanian herbal, cherry cordial and mandrake cordial, and the white flower arania. There is alcohol hest, useful in replenishing potion stores. The word alcohol hest is in reference to the real-life term alkahest, which in mythology of alchemy is a universal solvent, capable of diluting and dissolving any substance, and is said to be a magical and curative tonic. In terms of named potions, there are many. There is a regenerative kind, that heals wounds and replenishes a witch's strength. Swallow and White Rapper's decoction will soothe and heal any grievous wound that would surely kill a normal man. Uh, healing potion. Gotta drink one. Could try to help her with one of my potions. Swallow can heal internal hemorrhages. White Rapper's decoction gets its name from a famous mage. Got a new potion formula for you. White Raffart's decoction. Fortified. Take it. And although a revitalizing solution, it can adversely affect coordination, and it's of course highly toxic, and cannot be combined easily with other potions. There are many potions which affect the vitality, adrenaline, and stamina of a witcher. These being Full Moon, Blizzard, Maribel Forest, Tawny Owl, and Thunderbolt. Combative potions that bring a witcher to his most alert and most battle ready. The upper hand is everything when you fight toe to toe with a monster. One false move or slow reaction can mean death. 
the Witcher may gain the advantage by using these potions mentioned. Other potions have more niche and specialised effects. There is Black Blood, for instance, most useful against necrophages and vampires, any that would seek to bite deep and suck blood. The Black Blood solution rips through the veins of a Witcher, turning his very blood into a burning and toxic liquid. It has a very clear effect on Bruxae. The Golden Oriole Potion is one that grants an immunity to poisons, whether gaseous or within the bloodstream. It neutralises any fatal toxins that may have inflicted the Witcher. A fight with a basilisk bat. Need to brew a potion that'll neutralise that. Cat is a simple mixture to enhance a Witcher's vision. The Witcher already has the glowing eyes of a feline, yet this potion illuminates any dark spaces tenfold, allowing them to see every minute movement in caverns, tombs, or dark dungeons. Killer Whale causes a similar effect in terms of improving vision, but it does so underwater. It also greatly enhances a witcher's lung capacity, allowing a witcher to dive down into a drowner's lair, or survive being taken underwater by a siren in the Skellige Seas. Before I mention the last, and perhaps the most beneficial, there is a potion known as Petri's Filter, which when imbibed increases the power of a witcher's signs, and enhances the magical flow in their bodies allowing them to create more potent and potentially deadly magics. I will perhaps make a video on Witcher Signs as part of this Witcher's Weaponry series, so stay tuned. Lastly, there is White Honey, most beneficial to a Witcher as it clears any previous effects from toxic potions. It stimulates the production of purifying enzymes in a Witcher's mutated body. Using White Honey is essential, as it is possible for a Witcher to overdose on toxic potions. Even a mutated body can only handle so many toxins and poisons in the bloodstream. It is perhaps for taking potions that witches receive as much hate as they do, viewed as vile creatures, witchmen and butcherers. The alchemical decoctions can leave their mark, making a witch's face a ghastly visage, a pallid bloodless complexion, darkened eyes and protruding veins. Alchemy is not only useful for potions, but more conventional weaponry as well. Witcher bombs and blade oils can be crafted with the alchemical process, using the many raw materials of nature and magic. A witcher's silver sword, properly sharpened and cared for, can cut through any monster's hide, yet occasionally extra measures may be taken. Blade oils can be a useful tool in further debilitating a monster, through poison, alchemical substance or magical deterrent, a coating specifically designed to inflict as much damage as possible to a certain monster. Of dog tallow, fool's parsley. Wolf's liver and mistletoe. The fiend will feel terrible, terrible pain. A more explosive tool is that of Witcher bombs. Saltpetre or potassium nitrate is the base component, and through our chemical formulae, explosives with varying effects can be crafted by a learned Witcher. Some only inflict obvious damage you'd expect from a bomb. The grape shot is used to clear monsters' nests or reserve for larger foes such as draconids or a royal griffin. It's close. And the Dancing Star is a fiery explosive, a spinning cartwheel of a bomb. Most monsters fear flames alongside men. There's also Dragon's Dream, which releases a miasma or flammable vapour, particularly effective combined with aforementioned Dancing Star or a Witcher's Igni sign. Like with potions, some bombs are designed to deal damage to foes magical, spectral, and monstrous alike. Moon Dust unleashes silvery splinters, which lacerate the flesh of any monster susceptible to silver. Spectres and vampires to name a few. The Devil's Puffball, made from alchemist powder, suant mushrooms and the heart of an Andrega. Upon detonation it releases a poisonous gas surrounding the area. The Witcher can train himself to become immune to this gas himself, and is useful against therianthropes, fiends and chorts. Samum, when it explodes, produces a blinding bright light, a white flash that disorientates and confuses monsters. It also rings out a deafening explosion, particularly effective against shale mars, as it overloads their senses. There is of course Dimeridium bombs, an explosive which nullifies monsters of magical means. Created using the rare material of Dimeridium, a metal with properties that block magical ability. It is effective against ancient relics, magical abominations, and foes of the elemental realm. 
alongside any hostile mages Geralt may encounter on the path. And lastly, one of my personal favourites, there is Northern Wind, an icy storm bottled. A well-timed throw may freeze monsters and men alike. Without time to properly defrost, they may become a mist of ice and blood. All in all, alchemy is a crucial process for any witcher worth one's salt. Potions, salves, bombs and blade oils are all essential tools in a professional monster slayer's toolkit. The mysteries of alchemy unveil much to one willing to learn. So I thank you for watching this video on alchemy and the Witcher 3, and I hope you have enjoyed watching, and hopefully learned a thing or two. Leave a comment down below of your favourite moment in dabbling with alchemy and the Witcher 3. Be it a well-timed bomb, a certain alchemical build for your Geralt, or your long hunt for all the recipes and superior designs for everything mentioned in this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see more from me. You can find many Witcher lore and storytelling videos on my channel, Xenobox. I'm sure you'll find something there that interests you. Thank you again and good luck on the path. You should drink more potions. You're simply not as quick as you need to be. <sighs> I so don't feel like going anywhere. Sit here a while longer.